Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, very nice to see everyone at in the morning of Monday. Uh, today, very important topic, uh, which rarely uh, we uh, discuss, that is how we can uh, provide palliative care a on, into a patient who is on ECMO. So this uh, topic will be taken by doc, uh, by SMS Medical College Department of Palliative Medicine, SMS Medical College, Jaipur. And uh, the hmm, moderator of this uh, session is Dr. Gaurav. I know Dr. Gaurav since last many, many years. Dr. Gaurav is a professor of, uh, initially he was in anesthesia, now he's in palliative, he's professor of palliative medicine in Department of uh, Palliative Medicine at uh, SMS Medical College in Jaipur. Uh, he has got a lot of interest in chronic pain and neuropathic pain and especially chronic pain in cancer. Uh, uh, Gaurav, would I, I, I would like to request you uh, to introduce Sri uh, Harsh, your resident, and uh, start this lecture. And uh, kindly write down your questions. We will take the questions at the end. So Gaurav, you can, start, you can introduce uh, Sri Harsh. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Sriharsh uh, is our resident. He is uh, second year in uh, now. Uh, Sriharsh belongs to the Kerala and uh, now he is in second year. He will present the uh, lecture. I invite Dr. Sriharsh to start the presentation. A pleasant morning to everybody. I am here to present the topic palliative care in ECMO patients before you. I am going to talk about uh, introduction, a, a brief history, and types, indication, contraindications, and weaning of ECMO, and palliative care in ECMO patients, covering the physical aspects, psychological aspects, social and spiritual aspects, and concluding the autopsy. Introduction. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO, is an advanced form of mechanical circulatory support for patients with severe respiratory and cardiac failure. It was previously used only in pediatric population in meconium aspiration, etc. But now it has evolved over the past two decades into increasingly widespread intervention for patients of all ages. ECMO provides total cardiopulmonary support for a period of days to weeks with a global transitioning, either recovery or advanced therapy such as ventricular assist devices or transplant. It is not a curative treatment, it's a bridging therapy for further treatment. ECMO can be a bridge to recovery, bridge to transplant, or a bridge to ventricular assist devices. It can also be a bridge to decision where you can decide for this further management. We'll come out to some terminologies in the lecture. ECMO or ECMO is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. ECLS is extracorporeal life support. ELSO, extracorporeal life support organization. VA ECMO. We know arterial ECMO, VV ECMO, we know venous ECMO, and ECPR, extracorporeal cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The ECMO has been evolved since 1953 to now. It was based on the cardiopulmonary bypass, which was first successfully used in a heart, heart surgery. Then in 1971, it has been successfully used for resuscitation of a patient of chest trauma. Then it, uh, VV ECMO was first used in 1975 for a successfully for a neonatal respiratory failure like myocardium aspiration. Then in 2010, it has been initiated in emergency department for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And in 2012, it has employed in pre-hospital uh, resuscitation of patients. First, it was used in 1971 to successfully uh, rescue a patient with respiratory distress and lung injury after RT. This is the image of the ECMO which was developed in 1971 with so much tubes and so much IV lens for a patient which covering a whole room. Dr. Robert Bartlett is one important person who developed ECMO. He is known as a father of ECMO. His first case was in 1971, a newborn in Irvine, California. Dr. Bartlett helped to develop ECMO till date 
and uh, first successful case was about the new moon with uh, meconium aspiration. This is after 30 years later with the same baby, uh, she has grown and uh, lef uh, left side you can see Dr. Bartlett with her. The baby was named Esperanza by the staff who was working with her and meaning hope. The ECMO support comprises of the patient, the cannula which drains blood from the patient to the pump in the machine which circulates the blood through the system and an oxygenator which oxygenates the blood of the patient and through the cannula it goes back into the patient and all of this comprises the ECLS or extracorporeal life support. Tecmo has evolved from 1971 which covers a old room with the patient to just a cart in your room that help you with your oxygenation. Types of ECMO. Based on the cannulation and mode, the ECMO is divided into VA ECMO or veno arterial ECMO, which provides gas exchange and circulatory support to VV ECMO, veno venous ECMO that allows gas exchange only in isolated lung failure. In VA ECMO, there will be a bifemoral cannulation. Two cannula will be inserted, bilateral uh, femoral artery and vein. Uh, the blood is drained from the femoral vein and it is uh, it goes to the machine. The machine pumps the blood, get it oxygenated and pump back into your femoral artery and circulates through your body. In VV ECMO, it is drained from your femoral vein and gets oxygenated and it gets inserted into the internal jugular vein to the native functioning heart which you have because in VV ECMO, there should be a functioning heart for the patient. ECPR is one more important term. Uh, it, it's actually veno arterial ECMO support in cardiac arrest patients. It is used to resuscitation in cardiac arrest patients. This technique has been recommended by AHA and Extracorporeal Life Support Organization. The pre-hospital cardiac arrest, mostly the patients uh, with uh, after a CPR get uh, get back into. Uh, spontaneous uh, circulation and they are transferred to hospital for further care. If the patient get uh, is not able to recover after normal CPR, they can be considered for an eCPR with the help of an ECMO machine. But there should be at least sixty minutes time for the uh, for for the development of the cardiac arrest to the patient cannulation to the ECMO. Indication of VV ECMO. Veno venous ECMO is an artificial lung. It, it gives, provides a function of your lung. It gives oxygenation and removes the carbon dioxide. It is used in severe respiratory failure. Requires a functional native heart for the patient and does not provide any cardiac support. Indications of VV ECMO includes hypoxemic respiratory failure, hypercarbonic respiratory failure, and it to as a bridge to the lung transplant. For in, uh, proper indication of a in hypoxemic respiratory failure, there should be uh, has hypoxemic respiratory failure with one of the following Murai score greater than 3, PaO2 is to FiO2 less than 50 mmHg or for more than 3 hours, less than 80 mmHg for more than 6 hours, and less than 70 mmHg despite optimization of ventilator settings. The Morex score, all four parameters are considered. Uh, PAO2 by FIO2, chest X-ray, PEEP in centimeter of H2O, and compliance. And a score more than three, along with hypo, hypoxemic respiratory failure, it is an indication of VV ECMO. Indications of VA ECMO, ECMO bypasses the pulmonary circulation while providing cardiac support. This allow organ perfusion while heart rests and recover. Such an approach is called as a bridge to recovery, decision, or transplant. Indications of veno arterial ECMO, resuscitation during cardiopulmonary arrest is one of the indications, followed by cardiogenic shock of the following etiologies. Acute coronary syndrome, acute heart failure, decompensated heart failure, fulminant myocarditis, pulmonary embolism with right heart failure, post-heart transplant, graft rejection. 
along with that post cardiotomy high risk coronary interventions hemodynamic in instability after tavr re re refractory ventricular tachycardia and also uses a bridge to cardiac transplant like uh, ventricular assist devices contraindication of ecmo support contraindication of ecmo support are usually possibly due to treatment futility if there is uh, no further indication or no result by keeping the patient in ecmo it is a contraindication and un unwitnessed cardiac arrest like if you don't know how much time the patient has uh, had onset of cardiac arrest there is no meaning of keeping the patient in ecmo resuscitation uh, efforts more than 60 minutes irreversible non cardiac organ damage limiting survival like anoxic brain injury or metastatic cancer irreversible heart failure not amenable to transplantation or ventricular assist devices aortic dissection irreversible lung disease not amenable to trans, uh, transplantation of the lung along with this uncontrolled bleeding severe coagul uh, coagulation and contraindication to anticoagulants are also a major contraindication in ecmo support except this there are no other absolute con contraindications but it should be used based on case by case discussion and there are situation in which benefits of ecmo are questionable so we can't keep the patients on ecmo the major complications we will face in the ecmo are failure of oxygenation of the membrane intracranial hemorrhage acute kidney injury infections or limb ischemia due to the cannulation and differential hypoxia and ecmo lag the weaning from ecmo in patients on vv support improvements in radiographic appearance pulmonary complaint pulmonary complaints and arterial oxyhemoglobin saturation indicate that the patient might maintain satisfactory gas exchange and is ready to be weaned from the ecmo during weaning trial optimal ventilator se settings peep respiratory rate fio2 should be uh, should be determined to facilitate the pulmonary gas exchange if the patient remains hemodynamically stable and arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide is below 50 mmhg the weaning is completed and decannulation can be admitted for the, uh, at, attended for the patient from uh, how to wean from a VA ECMO. The decision to provide with weaning depends upon the clinical, hemo, uh, clinical and hemodynamical evidence of improvement and recovery. Recovery of cardiac functions can be assessed by echocardiography, decrease in the need for anotropes or process, mean, uh, mean arterial pressure more than 60 mmHg, stable heart rate and rhythm. Weaning from uh, weaning, the, this also uh, exp, uh, and in addition to this, the combination of improved radiographic parameters lung complaints pio2 by fio2 more than 20 mmhg 30 to 40 percent of fio2 predicts pulmonary improvement if those criteria are fulfilled weaning trial can be initiated by decreasing the flow of the ecmo on a va support patient and if the patients cannot be weaned off there we should consider for a cardiac transplant or a ventricular assist device should be considered so the, uh, in the previous slides, we discussed about the technicalities and indication contraindications of the ECMO. Now we are going to talk about the palliative care in ECMO in the basis of physical, psychological, social and spiritual aspects of the patient and their caregivers. Uh, the physical aspects will cover about the symptomatic management, physical therapy, mobilization and nursing care of the patient. Speaking about the Pain uh, uh, symptom management, there will be pain and non pain symptoms uh, most experienced by palliative care patients. Pain, we will deal with our uh, like all other palliative care patients by the WHO step ladder and also dyspnea and delirium. Same like how we treat a normal palliative care patient. But the one thing we should consider in mind that. Uh, ECMO circuit has to shown the decrease of concentration due to sequestration uh, and increase in distribution and increase in drug clearance of these patients. Because the patient is attached to this ECMO machine where the circuit is going on, that will surely uh, cause a difference in your the drugs which you are giving. This is a paper which was published in the Journal of Critical Care, evaluating of sedatives, analgesics, neuromuscular blocking agents in adults receiving ECMO. 
The pharmacokinetics of lipophilic agents such as morphine and midazolam are thought to be significantly uh, so, sort of decrease significantly in patients with ECMO. Morphine shows high interpatient variability in clearance, increased to five-fold after 10 days in one case series. Can cause withdrawal after decanylation. 40% of the circuit, 40% uh, of circuit binding is shown by morphine. Lorazepam, the even though we in vitro studies are uh, like less in lorazepam, sedation requirements appear to be increased over time, either to the adsorption in the uh, circuit or tolerance by the patient. Fentanyl, the in vitro studies of fentanyl shows 70 percentage of irre irreversibly bound to the circuit. The fentanyl gets bound to circuit 70 percentage and tenfold higher dosing in a case series. Propofol also, high circuit binding, about 90 percentage of high circuit binding is shown by propofol. So this sedative, uh, it, it becomes a poor choice of sedative in a ECMO patient. And speaking of antibiotics, gentamicin is more studied in ECMO and is recommended 2.5 to 3 milligram per kilogram every 18 to 24 hours in neonates because the ECMO is main, uh, was majorly used in neonatal patients. And vancomycin, the mo monitoring of le levels is critical in vancomycin. Tobramycin, bumetanate, rantanate shows increased volume of distribution and prolonged elimination. Serum concentration of heparin, phenytoin, phenobarbital are also reduced by loss of the drug from adhesion to the circuit components. The physical therapy in ECMO. The common physical therapy progression includes bed activities and bed mobility exercises such as passive range of motion and resting training. But one thing you should uh, consider is that mostly V, v, v ECMO patients are more tend to be awake in a, uh, ECMO settings. Most VA patients are either intubated or sedated. So uh, exercise mobilities are mostly done in VV ECMO patients. If, if, this, uh, if this bed mobility exercises are well tolerated, then the patient is progressed to the edge of the bed activities, including balance training, pre-transfer activities. Following this, Sit to stand transfers, standing and pre gate activities, and lastly, ambulation is practiced. Stabilization devices to secure the ECMO cannulas are recommended before physical therapy. Unlike the other normal patients, this patient is bound to a machine, and uh, multiple cannulas will be always inserted to the patient. Adjustment of the sweep glass flow rates and increased oxygenation settings can be used during physical therapy based on the clinician assessment. The uh, limitations of mobilization in this patient is the like fear of accidental decannulation. And patient on VA ECMO with a bifemoral cannula are very difficult to ambly. And the risk of hemodynamic instabilities will be always there. And lack of uh, training in the physical rehabilitation of these patients. The uh, ECMO patient being attached to the patient, there is, there is a need of a lot of staff and the uh, physician for mobilization of these patients. In spite of uh, limitations of patients are advised to do whatever level of physical therapy the patient can tolerate. Either it is a passive range of motion in a bed or ambulation in the hallway has always shown to improve the patient outcomes. The study at the University of Maryland demonstrated that the physical uh, mode is, safe, is possible regardless of the ECMO on can, uh, or cannulation side, the physical mobility is always needed for the patient. Need of a dedicated multidisciplinary team highly trained in the initiation of uh, physical therapy for ECMO. These teams typically include a physical therapist, two critical care nurses, a perfusionist or respiratory therapist, and a critical care attending physician. This is and this is always done after a medical and uh, medical screening and physical therapy assessment the patient can be made eligible for rehabilitation. The medical screening criteria include hemod hemodynamic stability specific to each patient. Quai and there should be no coagulopathy and there should be a stable ECMO flow rate and a RAS goal of minus one to zero uh, with a range of minus two to plus two. RAS, RAS is a Richmond agitation sedation scale usually used to determ uh, determine the delirium in ICU patients. So minus two to plus two from light sedation to uh, like uh, 
patient should be awake and uh, alert for a physical therapy to happen. And the stability of cannula position. The physical therapy assessment include vital signs, assessment of mental status, ECMO flow remaining stable, and uh, hip flexion with femoral cannulated low extremities are document, uh, and documented ECMO cannulation position should be there for the physical therapy to begin. And early mobilization is always useful for the patient. The advantage of early mobilization are early physical rehabilitation mobility implemented in patients with receiving chemo, uh, ECMO support have been shown to significantly improve the patient outcomes, including decrease the length of stay in the ICU and hospital, decrease the rate of delirium in these patients, shorter duration of mechanical ventilation, decrease time, uh, decrease time to ambulation and increase function. Next is about the nursing care. It includes monitoring of the ECMO circuit as nurses and associated staff, such as respiratory therapists and perfusionists. Attention that peripheral and central venous catheter wound, including assessment of erythema, poor lens, adequacy, securement, and dressing integrity should be there. Ensuring the securement and stability of the cannula by routine and repeated physical assessment. And checking for bleeding, hemat hematoma at the cannulation site should be there. Positioning of the patient, skin care and prevention of bed, bed sore. The patient being uh, bound to the ECMO and always in bed. The bed sores are a major, majorly seen in these uh, bedridden patients. So patients need to be turned and repositioned every two hours as tolerated. Turn should be scheduled. And this also should be done with the help of perfusionist and a critical care physician because Accidental decannulation and bleeding can occur anytime. Psychological aspects. Compared to no, normal or palliative patients, the, the ECMO patients and their caregivers, the psychological distress is very much. Because of the uh, patient being in an uh, attached wave machine and the unpredictability of the disease, and the, uh, like even the doctors could not predict the outcome, whether it's for a transplant or a uh, ventriculosis device. This was a study published in American Journal of Critical Care, which shows the improvement of patients and their caregivers psychologically uh, after early guided palliative care communications for patients with ECMO in COVID-19. The COVID-19 actually helped the ECMO to develop and used in many patients having a, a cardiac and respiratory failure. The palliative care specialist involvement in the care, uh, care of patients on COVID patients on respiratory disease and critical illness with the aims of relieving the suffering of the uh, suffering by managing symptoms by improving the symptoms of the patients, helping the patients define goal of care and make a major decision taking and also mediate challenging disc uh, care discussions including and conflict and indecisions of these patients the pay, uh, the this helped the patients and their caregivers uh, very much in making decisions like important decisions like withdrawal of ecmo during these times this was a uh, article that was published in the American Journal of Hospice and Palliative Care, which shows the importance of palliative care in uh, COVID-19 infections in the patients with ECMO. The palliative care assistance with pain and non-pain symptom management was very helpful for the patients and impact of palliative care on patients and the family outcomes such as symptom control, satisfaction with communication and decrease in rate of anxiety and great, uh, had given a great experience for them. Speaking of the social aspects, the treatment's uh, futility is one important social aspects we should uh, uh, we experience in ECMO. I would like to discuss a case. I would like to discuss a case before you to explain the treatment futility. There is a 50 year old man with no known history of past medical uh, past medical history arrives in the emergency department with unstable angina 
30 minutes later, he suffers a witness cardiac arrest with ventricular tachycardia noted at the outset. Despite 10 minutes of uninterrupted advanced cardiac support, there is no return of spontaneous circulation. The attending physician calls for a surgery consultation for consideration of ECMO. By looking to the prism of advanced selectives and DNR, although the decision to withhold CPR has framed as an issue of a patient autonomy, and others have argued such decision should be left to the physician to determine whether CPR is futile. But studying uh, while studying about a machine and its usage for a physician, there is uh, a list of indications and contraindications where we should not use. But there always comes a gray line between or gray area or a thin line between these indications and contraindications where the physician has to decide. When there is very remote chance of benefit and near certain harm in such circumstances, a physician should recommend withholding CPR to protect the patient. The same applies to eCPR. Even though eCPR is not uh, included in the DNR, which is should be further considered as this is being widely used in our country also. eCPR is a far more invasive and resource intensive intervention than uh, traditional CPR and has a capacity to prolong suffering considerably without changing the ultimate outcome. And speaking of the cost of ECMO, the average cost of ECMO procedure to administer to the portion, uh, patient costs about one to five lakhs in the um, majority of our corporate hospitals. And the per day maintenance, it costs about 80,000 to 1 lakh. This far exceeds a normal middle class person's uh, in, uh, medical insurance. And it is all enough to uh, bankrupt a normal middle class family. Withholding of ECMO. This, this was a paper published in uh, Journal of Pain and Symptom Management. The importance of role of palliative care and withdrawal of veno arterial. Uh, extra coronary membrane oxygenation in cardiogenic shock. The decision to withdraw a life life sustaining therapies, especially a mechanical sub, uh, circulatory support, become more difficult when the patient is able to join the decision making process. Because in uh, I have talked before also in VV ECMO patients, the patients are awake, alert, and he is perfectly alright. And when we find a treatment futility and this bridge. This uh, bridging therapy is not leading to anywhere. There is always a discussion of withdrawal, uh, withholding of ECMO, which includes the uh, caregivers of the patient. And if the patient is awake, patient also. When patients are incapacitated, usually due to a neurological injury, the decision is with, decision of withdrawal is very difficult, uh, very less difficult. Palliative care consultation improves the outcome of patients and their surrogates of the caregivers in critical care settings. Early involvement of palliative care was associated with significantly shorter duration on VA ECMO, highlighting the importance of early palliative care consultations to facilitate the withdrawal. Most commonly cited reasons of withdrawal of VA ECMO patients were prior wishes, suffering, and medical futility. These are findings of the uh, article which I have shown you before. And ethical consideration is also more because of the withdrawal of ECMO where the patient is away. So I would like to discuss another case with you to highlight these points. There is a 25 year old woman who is a lung transplant candidate with advanced pulmonary hypertension who is placed in an invasive mechanical ventilation for hypoxemic respiratory failure with decompensated right heart side failure. To maintain her transplant candidacy, she is placed on a VA ECMO and subsequently be extubated. Initially, she does well with her physical therapy and maintain her transplant candidacy. Over following two weeks, she develops renal failure requiring hemodialysis and become progressively deconditioned from limited participation in physical therapy and is deactivated from the transplant list. However, she remains awake, alert and conversant with her family and reports no discomfort from her supportive therapies. Attempts to wean ECMO sub, uh, as support and maximize the medical therapy result in respiratory and hemodynamic stability. She declines the options to endotracheal intubation or removal of the ECMO. So this patient is now stuck in ECMO 
but she's awake, alert, and conscious. And there is there is only treatment futility in her future. That means uh, she could not be kept in ECMO and she could not be extubated. And there comes the question of whether to withhold the patient from ECMO. What should be done with a patient on ECMO when there is no expectation of recovery or option for lung transplantation? If a patient with respiratory failure present without options for transplantation or recovery, there would be no ethical issue in withholding ECMO. Decision to withdraw ECMO from an alert, objecting patient in whom it is appropriately initiated, but for whom there is now no chance of recovery of transplantation is different from withholding a patient who is not conscious or the goals of ECMO is not realized. A patient who has capacity, as in the previously mentioned case, should be given an opportunity to understand her medical circumstances and the anticipated out outcomes. And we can explain that ECMO is not at all a uh, cure. And, and there is a limitation of ECMO, how much the ECMO could support her. If the patient chooses not to have ECMO withdrawn, her decision should be respected based on the ethical principles. When the patient's lack capacity and her wish, wishes regarding end of life care are unknown, then the decision regarding continuation of like, uh, ECMO life support uh, rests with the patient's surrogate and decision maker and their physicians. The patient's physician should meet with the surrogate and communicate as accurately as possible and what prognosis and other options are. Seek his or her understanding and help reach a decision together regarding what is perceived to be the patient's best interest. Speaking about spiritual aspects in a palliative care patients, spiritual care is an important component of highly high quality health care, especially for critically ill patients and their families. It's common that spiritual care resources can improve both patient outcomes and family member experience, but are very underutilized uh, in our medical system. In case of ECMO patients, awake, alert, and suffering, and pro uh, providing spiritual healing to these patients as well as their caregivers will be very commendable. There, but there are a lot of limitations in delivering the spiritual care. First of all, is the lack of time as well as lack of train training aimed at developing the skills to detect patients' spiritual needs. Physicians may often miss the opportunities to address the spiritual concerns of the patients and their family while addressing their uh, uh, medical conditions. Patients or family, uh, religious or spiritual preferences were only superficially explored. Underutilization of a trained chaplain who are specifically trained to attend the uh, patient's spiritual needs are often happen. Patients who are obtained may not derive benefits from the spiritual care. The patients who had a neuronal injury and is not able to, or patient is in delirium, then uh, we could not provide the patient with the spiritual care. The assessment and delivery of spiritual care. Open-ended interview. Even the physician can do it as uh, or having open-ended questions regarding the patient's spiritual beliefs or what he thinks about his conditions and actively listening it and talking about other uh, non-medical concerns and needs and giving empathetic response to the patient's response will open up the patient's spiritual and help in his uh, healing. And the FICA questionnaire is also a tool that is used to assess and also deliver uh, spiritual care for the patient. And the HOPE approach to survival uh, spiritual assessment uh, is also used as a, a tool in assessing and delivering the uh, spiritual care. To provide spiritual care for the patients, the use of a trained chaplain or a religious spiritual care provider is very useful in spiritual healing for the patients. The physician can also help the patients talking about his religious or spiritual beliefs where and there is no that much difference between them. And uh, concluding this topic, the palliative care focus on symptom management, psycho, uh, psychosocial and spiritual support, goals of care conversation and advanced care planning of uh, patients on ECMO. Studies have shown that early inclusion of palliative care in ECMO has helped the patients and caregivers decrease psychosocial stress and make the decision on withholding of ECMO.
in in uh, um, previous year also also discussed about vv ecmo patients and keeping these patients awake and alert the recent study has support uh, support that the post -ec ecmo recovery and survival increase with when the patient is being awake the arguments of keeping patients awake in ECMO include reduced incidence of delirium, early mobilization, improved rehabilitation, and promotion of interaction of families so that these patients can understand their situation, also help them in spiritual healing, and also providing palliative care support for these patients. Awake ECMO concerns only a minority of patients, mostly patients on VV ECMO. Among uh, awake patients, minority will neither recover or uh, be a candidate of transplantation. We may assume that this number will only increase in the coming times because uh, the ECMO is more uh, used widely and more hospitals will acquire this ECMO and help the patients with ECMO. And uh, then the treatment futility also increases with this and thereby it become a bridge to nowhere. The awake patients who wish to continue their life support for like some time like for a child of a uh, birth of a child or any remaining tasks to be accomplished in life. The limited time it can offer can provide the patient with a precious opportunity of life completion, social and spiritual relationship, and also help the caregivers for uh, better bereavement and uh, better end of life care of the patient. And thereby it can become a bridge to a dignified end of life for the patient. Uh, speaking of the ECMO, uh, what comes in my mind is uh, um, a famous medical drama, House MD, season four, episode six. Doctor Wilson's girl, uh, like girlfriend, she uh, her goes into a heart failure, and she is uh, is in a cardiac bypass, and there is no uh, then they when the medical team understand there is no recovery, they uh, they make the patient awake. So that the Dr. Wilson could talk to her and give a last kiss for the patient. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was so good, Sri My Thank God, you. you have understood subject so well and you have explained it so well. Gaurav, would you please comment and then we can take question answer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I... I'm checking, but there is still now there is no comment in the chat box. Would you like to add something in this lecture? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's a ECMO is a very specified uh, uh, topic uh, nowadays. After COVID, uh, it's a renewed interest in this ECMO uh, part, and most of the uh, Cities or corporate hospital now are providing these uh, services and uh, big institutes, but the cost factor is very important. So it's a very costly treatment. The patient care is very important. We have to take a multidisciplinary approach uh, when we are uh, taking this patient for palliative care. There are the many aspects which we have to take into care: rehab people, intensivist, physical therapy. And then the ethical aspects also. It's a very important thing. We have to take the proper communication with the patient and their attendants. The communication has to be uh, very clear uh, because the most, uh, the major problem in this uh, ECMO patient is the decision making. Uh, whether they will, they want to go for it and since long, uh, how long they want to continue for it. Uh, because most of the patient, they are in the waiting list for the transplantation. Uh, or something, uh, uh, sometimes they are uh, clear that they, they got the uh, uh, all the facilities for the transplant. Sometimes they are not uh, uh, getting uh, approved for the transplantation. So this is a very, uh, sometimes it's a lengthy process. Um, many patients, they are on the few months. Uh, and uh, every day there is a uh, increase in the cost and the chances of the uh, many complications which uh, can arise. So we have to be uh, put along a lot of uh, support staff, including other uh, rehab, physical therapy, psychological uh, support. These things are very important to uh, take care when we are uh, dealing with this patient. These are very complicated 
uh, things, but we have to take care. And another thing is we have to take care uh, the drug wise, the morphine and fentanyl, these are the drugs which we have to take care of the proper titration and the doses we have to alter due to the uh, altered pharmacokinetics. This is also an important point. Very good, Gaurav. So, uh, uh, anyone wants to say anything? Dr. Minakshi, you are here. You, are, you want to say something? Dr. Minakshi. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I just, uh, I know I have no experience with ECMO, but I just wanted to uh, congratulate Dr. Gaurav and uh, uh, Dr. Sriharsh to for having made the lecture very, uh, you know, um, instead of loading us with the lots of information because we are not going to be uh, cardiac uh, physicians, uh, but you know, as just just enough information for palliative care and uh, to have the, the flow of the uh, presentation is also uh, very uh, very uh, the cadence was very good. I just wanted to congratulate them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thank you Mina, Dr. Mm -hmm. Minakshi. I think this is absolutely right, uh, Gaurav and Sriharan, that <clears throat> you have given the appropriate information what palliative on slowly. <clears throat> you have given two examples. I think that examples were very, very appropriate. One 25 years old female who is going to uh, they are planning for lung transplant and for in the in that meantime she had uh, uh, hypoxia and uh, she is not maintaining saturation and put on uh, put on ECMO. I think that was in a good example and then finally uh, doctors they are denying uh, for uh, for ECMO because of her renal failure and then mm, then there is a uh, there is a situation of dilemma what exactly we should do. And you have given enough example that if you really want to postpone for an actual something like somebody, some daughter is getting married or son is getting married or some, somebody is getting born, birth or the last example that just wanted to give the last kiss. I think these are fantastic example. This is what palliative care is. But uh, ultimately, I just want to say that ECMO uh, but definitely is a very, very expensive therapy. But uh, uh, and uh, we have a very good example of our uh, 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 honorable uh, former prime minister, Dr. Uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji. He should have never be put on, we should have never put him on ECMO, but we have done. So this is the way uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can explain that uh, where it should be necessary and when it should be not necessary and uh, uh, even I gave one exam one lecture in ECMO conference in palliative care in ECMO patient and what in while re reading literature what I've realized that very fraction of patients they get benefited by ECMO so it is important and uh, actually uh, what I'm thinking what I'm I I, I just want to suggest that. Uh, this palliative care physician uh, should be uh, involved long time before, right? Rather than patient, when patient is on like more, you are involving palliative care physician. It will be better that we involve palliative care physician long before, discuss with the palliative care physician. And if we think that it is just, we are just... Uh, just putting ECMO just because we just want to prolong life without any reason, uh, definitely we should give a thought. We want to prolong life just because we want to give some curative treatment, definitely we should plan uh, uh, this. And if you want to prolong life for any unfinished business, which patient has not finished and wanted to finish, I think this is also again justified. But Again, uh, it is it is going to, it is very very expensive. It is impossible to um, afford by a mid, lower middle class or middle class person. So uh, we have to be very very careful that what exactly we are talking. We should give option only when we know that it is it is not going to be futile or it is appropriate for the patient. So um, overall, I think. Um, you did a very nice, very nice presentation. So anyone else, uh, I can't, uh, any resident wants to ask? I can see so many new residents in the group. Anyone wants to ask anything, please? Dr. Kalpana, you want to add something? Pranit, Kalpana, Pranit, Rajesh, Majan, mm -hmm. Shobha. 
yes yes dr kalpana go ahead yeah i just wanted to uh, i think uh, there is a big uh, uh, this thing of ethical dilemma and uh, distributive justice comes in especially if you are working in an uh, organization an ngo like ours or in a in a government setup when you do not know how to spend for a particular patient when there are so many other needs so that is one thing that i thought we need to think about uh, why is an amazing presentation i know you. amazing presentation absolutely so shobha dr shobha also said the same thing that we should involve palliative care physician long time before uh, um, rajesh and uh, yeah. pranith would like to add um, hello madam uh, yeah uh, thank uh, thank you uh, so one thing you know with the current uh, current uh, load of uh, patients in the critical care world and uh, the way things are uh, uh, they are the research is happening to improve the survival and a uh, uh, lot of suffering is still happening so with the current uh, given workforce of palliative medicine uh, uh, workforce how can we uh, make the physicians and critical care physicians um, integrate palliative care in uh, and uh, understand the palliative care principles understand the concept of suffering understand the concept of futility uh, because even they want to uh, be approached uh, because i have seen that we are doing a lot and we are at the end of the day we are having critic and uh, ultimately there is a lot of futility which is happening which is they, they are able to see but they are helpless because of the uh, uh, lack of knowledge of the laws regarding the so which uh, which holding etc uh -huh. so so, uh, uh, so go ahead yes, um, Go so, ahead. what do you want, to, Miss? You want to ask that how we can integrate palliative care concept in critical care? This is what you want to ask, Pranit. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I was muted. Sorry, madam. So uh, I'm telling uh, uh, that in the cities, like major cities like Delhi, Hyderabad, uh, Mumbai, etc., the, there is awareness among the critical care physicians. But if we go interiors, uh, uh, if we go interiors, it is difficult. Uh, so, uh, what uh, from a policy making perspective, uh, even uh, the withdrawal guidelines, everything was made in the ICMR and the last publication and. Uh, but still the message is not being delivered to the critical care physicians in the uh, slightly tired to cities madam that is what i am trying to say so, so for this uh, pranit i think this is a separate topic this is not the topic today but definitely this is required and the critical care, indian society of critical care medicine and indian society of palliative care we are we are making uh, end of care guidelines uh, end of life care guidelines for, yes, uh, for yeah, such that patients. is true madam guidelines so, are there but it is uh, uh, not being delivered to the tier 2 cities exactly. uh, so, so this will be this will be a separate job for pranith we have to sensitize we have that's what we are doing everybody is doing whatever way possible everyone is trying hard that it should reach to the real critical care physician oncologist and other other people those who are looking after uh, sick patients or chronic patients so we are trying for that and this this is this is a message which we have to give but uh, uh, how to give food to everyone everyone is trying and that's why so many conferences happening so many meetings are happening so i think everyone is trying pranit thank you pranit thank you my uh, one thought was <clears throat> with the insurance companies are paying a lot of money for the patients mm -hmm. who are in icu and uh, sometimes even the futility is identified the patient is not shifted from the icu and insurance company have to pay out of their pocket mm. so uh, if there is uh, if the insurance companies start to uh, if we sit with these insurance companies and make the policy on identifying futility and uh, if the uh, if there are issues uh, which are which are made <clears throat> uh which are discussed in form and, and uh, then understood that okay uh, after 7 days of uh, uh, staying in icu there should be a meeting of futility which has to be conducted among the physicians and uh, insurance companies are say, uh, uh, insurance companies it's if they come idea. up with a with the say that reimbursement cannot be provided if uh, uh, overstay is happening then ultimately physicians they only try to Uh, understand that we should understand. be making and, uh, i think yes. again 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 it's a, uh, it's it's a different topic and we should definitely yeah. discuss yes, in morning yes. sometime 
sure uh, thank we will discuss it. okay good so thank you nice presentation uh, nice presentation thank you. very nice presentation gorav and shri harshar it was a good, uh, excellent presentation and thank you very much thank you everyone for uh, joining uh, on monday morning and we will see you next week uh, before 7:30 thank you thank, thank you, you gorav thank, thank you, you. Bye-bye.